Good morning, distinguished guests and media friends. Welcome to the Terry Elementary for the Feet to See Chronic Absenteeism Press Conference. My name is Shahita Bolampali. I'm a student in Ms. Gilliam's fifth grade class. What I love about Terry is the amazing teachers and specialists that are willing to help students learn. That is what inspires me to attend school every day. At this time, I would like to introduce Molly Polymer, Director of Marketing and Communications with the United Way one of the many sponsors of the Chronic Absenteeism Campaign. Ms. Polymer. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. We're really, really excited about today. This is a day we've been looking forward to for a long time. Um, as an organ organization focused on the education, financial stability, and health of every person in our community, we know how important it is to support our students and our teachers and our parents to make sure that every student in our community is getting a great education. When we learned a while back about the impacts of chronic absenteeism and what that meant for our students and our schools, we knew we wanted to get involved. We learned things like students that are chronically absent, who are considered chronically absent when they miss just 10% of school, and that's only two days a month. Um, children who are chronically absent are less likely to read at grade level, um, which is a, a key indicator of student success, and in later grades, chronic absence is a key warning sign that students may be uh, dropping out of school. We know that supporting our students and our schools is work that is best done in partnership, and that's exactly what has happened here. Really, really thankful for the Optimist Club of Greater Little Rock and their involvement in this campaign. They gave us a grant um, to be able to pursue this campaign, to be able to, to um, produce materials that would help students and parents understand the importance of daily attendance. Um, I want to recognize Megan Golden, who's kind of been our partner in this project through Our Kids Read. Uh, Megan is the marketing and outreach director for Our Kids Read. United Way and Our Kids Read really worked hand in hand in this process. Um, Our Kids Read is built around working with the community to improve um, the future of students by focusing on early literacy. And of course, that early literacy is really contingent on daily school attendance. Um, we hope that the work that we've done together will encourage parents and students to be here every day. We also hope that it provides um, teachers some supports as they're providing the kind of one-on-one -on -one intervention that some students need. So I want to now invite uh, Ms. Stephanie Franklin, who's the principal here at Terry Elementary, up to talk about what that has looked like here at her school. Thank you. Before I begin, I would like to recognize a few distinguished guests. Um, we have the Little Rock School District team that comprises of Superintendent Michael Poor, Dr. Sadie Mitchell, Dr. Erica McCarroll, Mr. Burton, Dr. Karen Henry, and Laquita Grayson. From the Arkansas Kids Read campaign, we have Megan Golden, Charlie Conklin, and Susan Dunn and Jennifer Glasgow, also with the Arkansas Campaign for Grade Level Reading. Terry was able to realize a decrease in our absenteeism as well as tardy um, attendance last year due to a number of factors. Uh, I equate that to a variety of communication efforts. We always post on the marquee something about attendance, and if you drove up today, I'm sure you saw Beyond Time, school starts at 740, just as a a nice friendly reminder. Um, in addition to that, we communicate through social media. We use Class Dojo school-wide, campus-wide, and we are constantly putting reminders for parents about not only what time school starts, but how important attendance is and how it impacts their students' education. We speak about it at Open House and every parent involvement activity that we um, host on our campus. We have conversations with students and families one-on-one -on -one with administration when we notice a pattern. Um, that lends itself to becoming a chronic absentee uh, issue for that family. And we work to resolve um, any issues that they may have. Oftentimes it involves transportation concerns or issues with scheduling. So administration tries to support by finding community resources to assist them. And we do that through one of our, um, or we will do that through one of our, par our programs in the district called Bright Futures. We offer incentives to incentivize and to congratulate and reward those students who attend regularly just to recognize if we speak that language to the students in a language that they hear, um, that is having fun when they're 
having a no, a no tardy dance party or if they get to have lunch on the patio with the principal and the counselor because of their perfect attendance, or they're walking across the stage receiving a perfect attendance award during an honor roll assembly, that helps to both uh, boost the importance of attendance, not only in the student, but also in the family. So those are some of the many efforts that we uh, will continue to work towards to improve attendance at Terry and that other schools around our district are also working to uh, improve at this time. I would like to introduce Mr. Poor, our superintendent. Thank you so much, Ms. Franklin. And um, it is uh, really a neat thing to be with all of you today. It's great that we got students here, and uh, I'm glad that they're uh, participating in this uh, press conference. You know, we've got a phrase that we use in our district over and over and over, and I, I love the phrase, and it, 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 it I think it signifies a lot about what this partnership represents, and it's called the power of us. The power of us is a phrase that we've used now starting our third year, and it's a connector piece. It's something that brings everybody together because it says it takes every one of us. It takes young people to pitch in. It takes a staff to pitch in. It takes parents to pitch in, and of course then it takes great partners to participate and help us to get to a good place. This specifically began with the grade level reading campaign and Jennifer Glasgow um, was spearheading there she is. I was trying to see where she's at down the line. She spearheaded that target and uh, she came in uh, to my office a little more than a year ago and talked about chronic absenteeism. And you know, it was kind of shocking to me when you look at that of just how dramatic something can happen to a, a young person's ability to really get a full year's worth of academic growth and it can be simple things. Yes, being absent for a day obviously takes away the opportunity to learn. But the other things that occur is if parents bring child, a child in late or a parent pulls the child early from the classroom to go home, those things all add up as well. And that creates the situation where you get into that term chronic. And chronic then means that you have really a, a very challenging time to get a year's worth of growth, which is what we're all about. When you look at this array of partners that we have here, you know, we've got really fantastic people, whether it's looking at um, the grade level reading campaign, but also AR Kids Read, who's been a, a longtime partner with the school district. And I just finished uh, putting together a letter for AR Kids Read uh, for something that, that they're going to use. And, and I look at them as a true blessing within our community because it brings in community leaders throughout um, our city and our region to come in and do tutoring and do uh, reading and enhance passion towards reading. And, and that's an awesome thing. And you look at United Way also as a, a partner, long time standing within our district. We appreciate that. And Optimist is really, this is the first time that I can remember since I've arrived that, that they've contributed in a significant way. You know, the common theme about all those organizations is that all of them rely on donations that come in from the community. And every dollar that you put in to those organizations have a direct tie back to supporting young people. And, and that's something we should never forget. And we hope that those that are watching this on the uh, media tonight will remember and think, wow, I've got to do things to go support grade level reading. I've got to do things to support AR Kids Read, to support the United Way, support the Optimist Club because those dollars invested come right back in to a community investment of helping young people do good things. Parents, we can't do this without you as partners uh, in this district and your participation and, and just thoughtful actions about getting your child to school on time and allowing them to be in school during the entire day. That's one easy thing that we believe you can help us with but then also doing everything you can to support your child to be healthy and well during the year, school year. And there's so many different things that can help, whether it's our own school nurse program or Bright Futures, as mentioned by our principal. Um, there are things that are avenues and vehicles to support you in keeping your child healthy and well throughout the year. It really is a, a neat moment. Uh, this campaign doesn't just embody what's supposed to happen for elementary schools. This is actually a K-12 effort, so middle and high school will also be a part of efforts to impact absenteeism, and we're going to need your continued support. This is the kickoff. I love the phrase, feet to the seat, because 
That's what we want. We want young people in the, in the room getting to work with each other and work with our teachers, and that will make a difference. I know it will. Probably one of the easiest things we can do to improve academic achievement is through this campaign. So thank you. It's my honor to be a part of this ceremony today. Okay, we'll take some questions now. The initial target um, was that the 14 elementary schools that had the highest rates of chronic absenteeism, um, and then we added also in the uh, three middle schools and three high schools that have those highest rates. What is that sort of that threshold? Dr. McCarroll, can you speak to that? <laughs> chronic absenteeism. <clears throat> is measured by 10%, um, higher than 10% absences during a school year, and that typically equates to two days a month. And how bad is the problem in the, in the schools? Is it like 75% of the kids are there regularly, 25 are chronically absent? Is there sort of a number? There's not a number um, overall. We do have 20 schools, 14 elementary, three middle schools, and three high schools that have been identified as having chronic absenteeism um, issues. And so for each school, the percent will vary based on the population. Yes. Let's say those six in the middle of school, will that count too? That is an awesome question. question, awesome question. And the answer is yes. Um, even uh, chronic illnesses attribute to uh, the overall chronic absenteeism um, rate. However, we notice that most of the students that are absent are not bringing in doctor statements or things like that. It's just an issue that we need to bring awareness to. So there are some that are sick, but majority of them uh, do not show up or don't, we don't have record of them being uh, ill. That's a great question. Oh, hi. Do you do this press conference every September or is it just the first time? That is a fabulous question too. September is actually Attendance Awareness Month. So this year we are kicking off this campaign uh, to bring awareness to our chronic absenteeism. Will we do a press conference next year? Oh, Mr. Poor will have to answer that question. <laughs> and he's shaking his head. <laughs> so I will yield the floor to Mr. Poor. Well, we, we do envision this being a, a program that we carry on for multiple years because this type of issue doesn't just go away instantly. And so we'll have to keep awareness and keep working and it's great to have support organizations to make that a reality. The other thing that I will share is that uh, we plan to take this to the community. I mean, it's one thing to do the press conference. I think you're going to like the fact that we're going to go walk in the community, and that's going to happen on September 22nd at 10 o'clock in the morning. So students, we may be knocking on your door, okay, um, and just saying hi and, and sharing the importance. So we will have um, a total of 20 of our schools out doing community walks, and. We've, we've done that practice ever since came into the district. We will do it now with this and have a, a mass outpouring of, of folks walking the community to just share the importance of taking this message to the streets and to our parents about getting people's feet to the seats. With that, we'll probably end this press conference. If any other uh, media members would like to ask some specific questions, we'll, we'll entertain those. But we so appreciate uh, Terry Elementary hosting us today. And we appreciate our student involvement and the excellent questions that you asked. Um, I'm sure that some of the members of the media may be coming to you to see if you would eventually like to be a reporter. Okay, so um, thank you very much, and we hope that you have a good rest of your, your morning. Thank you.